Hi, it's Sandra at Red Rover. I'd like to talk to you today about when we're home a lot. So this applies right now, but it will also apply anytime, really. If you are home a lot with your dog or your puppy, and a lot of people will take time off when they get a new dog or a new puppy, whether you're adopting one or bringing a new puppy into your house, you may take a week or two off. Um, sometimes it's just the weekend, you're with your, your new pet constantly. But what happens when you leave? What happens when you have to go to work? What happens if you need to go shopping? So you wanna make the transition as nice and smooth as possible as you can for your new dog or your new puppy because we don't wanna create separation anxiety. And separation anxiety is something that the humans create. The dogs don't come with that. Now, if you've adopted a dog, it might come with that, but we can break the pattern. So what we wanna do is start creating um, a dog that can exist calmly without you in its presence. So at first, that may just be going into another room. We like using a crate for this because then the dog is contained and you can practice this with your puppy or uh, a dog that you've had for a while that maybe has some separation issues. Um, if you have severe problems, you need to consult a, a dog trainer in your area to resolve this. But generally what you wanna do is just create some separation from you and your pet. And the best time to start is with a puppy and just put them in the crate. If the crate is not being used as punishment, the crate is just a place to, for your dog to be happy and calm and sleep and be safe while you're not there. And also for the dog to learn to exist when you're not there, knowing that you will come back. So you don't wanna create a lot of commotion around the crate. You just want the dog to go quietly into the crate. Um, you may, if it's a young dog, very young, you may just have to put them in the crate don't make a big fuss, just shut the door. And at first you may just wanna be in the room with the dog in the crate. And then later on, you can go into another room and you can extend the time on this. When our little Daisy was small, we have a, a nanny cam. So we put that on and we just sat quietly on our front porch when she was in the back bedroom in the crate. What we did was we monitored her and we don't wanna ever open the crate when the dog or puppy is carrying on. So crying, whining, barking, being frantic. We don't want them to learn, and they will learn this very, very quickly, that if they carry on, you're gonna let them out. So what we wanna do is interrupt that. So you can interrupt it by giving a quick little tap on the top of the crate, startled out of its um, frantic or barking or demanding behavior, whatever it is, whatever is unwanted, um, you want to interrupt it with a tap, a different sound. You can, you can give the crate a little jiggle. You're not going to scare the dog. We just want to interrupt them, startle them. The dog will stop. And in that second of time or two seconds, you're going to open the crate. And at first it could be that quick. You may not have a lot of time because it'll start again. So you don't want to create more frustration. So I'm talking about the very initial stages of when you're starting to crate train your dog. Later on, you can prolong this period, make them be calmer longer, and we'll talk about you know thresholds and that sort of thing. But if this is just brand new to everybody, you wanna just create that moment of calmness, quiet calmness, break the pattern of barking, crying, scratching at the crate, clawing at it, being frantic. The second that they're calm, that's when you can open the crate. And even a dog that's had a bad association with a crate in the past, so let's say you've adopted a dog, they can still learn. But you may need some extra help with that, so you should contact a trainer for that. You can also have, if the, say the dog's attached, so there's more than one person in the house, and the dog is really attached to one or two people, then put the dog on leash or the puppy on leash and have somebody else in the household do things with the puppy and the person who it has the big attachment to, you're gonna go in another room. And again, you're gonna do this all very calmly. And when, now when you return, not only if we're talking about the crate or if the dog is loose in the house or um, on leash with somebody else, you are not going to make a big fuss over the dog. You're just gonna come in and not even make eye contact. You're just gonna walk in, carry on, do your stuff. And then you can later on approach the dog. It's this excitement that we create that feeds 
the separation anxiety. So when we come in, we don't do anything. The dogs, yes, we have one that's crated, two that are not. And yes, they are happy to see us, but they're not crazy. And we act like nothing's happening. When we leave, we act like nothing's happening. We just leave. We don't say, we'll be back soon, you'll be a good boy. Anything like that that is crazy making and get the dog all riled up and then you leave and then they're all riled up and there's nobody there. And when you return, you're just gonna be just as calm and nonchalant. You could do a few things before you let the dog out of the crate, uh, before you even make eye contact with the dog if they're loose. Just be calm. Don't make coming and going a big event. It's the non-event aspect of it that is the key to it. And you have to practice this, okay? So this is something to be certainly very aware of right now when we are spending so much time with existing or new pets, but it also is a problem other times as well, because believe me, separation anxiety did not start with COVID-19. It's been going on for a while and it can be fixed, but the better thing is to prevent it. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how our Daisy uh, is going into the crate and she did not like it. She, um, I, I talk about that our, our dogs will get off the furniture as well. So here they are. I'm gonna flip the screen over, but I'm just gonna do this for now. So there's our Daisy on the couch and there's Cosmo on the couch too. So I'm just gonna stop the camera and I'll be right back. All right, here we are again with the dogs on the couch. All right, I'm gonna send Daisy to her C-R-A-T-E. All right, Daisy, crate. Come on, Daisy. There she goes. Crate. And that's what we do, all right? So there she is. Now, she likes to charge out, so she knows the word wait, all right? Wait. I'm not opening it. Free. Good girl. And that's how we have crate trained Daisy. So she's excited now, but she was calm when she went in and she was calm until I let her out. The place command is another excellent tool that you can use to help prevent or to fix separation anxiety. You can use your dog's bed, one dog per bed, but we also prefer to use the raised cot. It is much easier for the dog to understand when it's on something and when it's not, but you can use anything that has defined edges. The place command is an excellent tool for when you want your dog to be with you, but not on top of you. And it teaches them that they can exist around you without being constantly near you. So you can create more distance as the dog learns this command. Watch our other videos for more instruction on this.